Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Well, do you own the FIMI 2022 edition version one or version two? This is version two right here. Well, then you can get yourself one of these, the TX10 by FIMI. It's a remote with a 1000 nit display in it. Android system base, I believe it's Android 9. Uh, the antennas will give you about a 10 kilometer range. So the specs say it has a four hour run time. It's not bad. You can put apps on it. So you can put different apps to control your FIMI if you wish. So in this video, which which I hope is not too long. I'm going to check this out because I've never used it outdoors. I want to see if it's as good as they say it is. Bright screen, lots of switches on it. More switches than you would get on this here remote that you probably got with your Fimi. Uh, so it should do a little bit more, a little simpler. I would think. I don't know, but I'm going to try it out in this video. Now, if you're not familiar with the TX10, it came out in the month of June or July of this year of 2022. And I just received one recently. So that's why it's kind of late video. I'm getting to this finally. But uh, if you're not familiar with it, how about I show you all the physical features on here and what all the switches and buttons do. I'll point to them and then I'm going to show you in real life and we're going to test it out right here. So watch this first, then come back to me. This is the box. Your TX10 comes in. Inside the box, you'll find an instruction manual plus your TX10 and the joysticks are located on the rear. On the front, you'll find the 5.5 inch display. It is a resolution of 1080p at 1000 nits of brightness. On the top left, you'll find your C1 back button, then your left joystick, followed by the auxiliary one dial. Next, there is the remaining power indicator, followed by the power on off button, then followed by the flight mode switch. To the right of that is the connection indicator. Then we have our auxiliary two dial, followed by the right joystick and then followed by the C2 button, which acts as your zoom toggle. Looking at the back of the TX10, you have two customizable buttons. In the center, you'll find a connector for an external add-on module. Now looking at the top of the TX10, you'll find the C3 switch, followed by the C7 camera up down dial. Below that is the return to home and pause button. In the center, we have the two movable antennas. On the right hand side, you'll find the C4 switch. Below that, you'll find the C8 dial to adjust the camera exposure, followed by the start, stop, record, and take a photo button. In the center, you'll find the USB-C charge and data port, followed by the HDMI out port, and then to the right, you have the audio out jack. Along the bottom, you have a slot for a micro SD card, as well as a phone SIM card. Now looking at the bottom of the TX10, you can see the vent holes for the fan. There is a cooling system in this, as well as a tripod mount. To bind your drone to the TX10, just hold down the bind button on the FIMI and make sure the rear indicator light on the drone goes out. On the TX10, hold down the C1 and C2 buttons for more than five seconds. And when the indicator light on the FIMI comes back on, binding is complete. All right, so you're back to me. I just want to show you this controller does not have a lanyard holder, like, you know, some place to put something around your neck and then put a lanyard so it hangs off it. The reason I'm telling you that is because for me to show you the screen, certainly I can record the screen. There is a screen record built into this, but I want to show it to you as if it was your eyeballs looking down at it. So I want to stick like a GoPro on top. So I have to use some sort of holder to stick it on my chest. And I happen to have one, which is perfect for controllers and things without a lanyard. So I'm gonna put that on. All right, so here it is. It's a lanyard type system. It's designed for photographers. So that's why I have it, because it works with cameras. It's made by a company called Cotton, and I think they call it the Scout 2. So you take your controller, if you have no spot for a lanyard, or even if you do, you could do it with DJI controllers. It's actually kind of made for that. You have this L-shaped bracket that goes in the back, and you can unscrew this thing here and it comes off, but you can lock it in place. And then you take this and you stick it in like this. And if I had the strap on nice and tight, you could put it up like this or down there but the idea is your hands are free and your controllers down here and yeah you can take your hands away all right so what you see here is the end result this i call the houdini can you get out of this type system it's like i don't know look i've got a gopro harness over top of that cotton harness it's kind of weird so if I show you the screen down below, I have it turned off. Like it automatically turns off here. I'll get into the camera here. It automatically turns off if you don't do anything with the screen for a while. So to turn it back on, I just hit the power button. Now it's the perfect day because it's cloudy and sunny at the same time. So uh, we'll get periods of cloud and periods of sun. 
with the clouds you'll see reflections in here and with sun you might see glare I don't know so hopefully it's kind of giving you the idea of eyeballs all right I'm gonna hit the power button on here to bring it back to life and let's see if we see the screen do you see it try to look through my GoPro here see the same thing I see my head my head is causing oh my god this is not working the way I thought it my head is causing a shadow on top of the screen so get used to that also my GoPro from here to here is not really the uh, appropriate distance it should be a little higher to keep things in focus because GoPros have a fixed lens on them and the fixed focus all right this is an Android based system so I'm just gonna scroll down from the top I'm checking everything brightness is on max that's good we're all good there and if you want to see all the apps on your system you just scroll up from the bottom and there's all the apps on the system so i'm going to turn on the screen record it comes built into this controller android 9 i don't know if it's part of android 9 or part of this controller but there is a screen record so i'm going to pull down to find it there it is it says screen record i'm going to hit it and i see a little recorder so i'm putting the record on it says do you want to start now yes starts recording there we go and I can slide that little screen recorder over to the center of my screen. There we go. I've got it over there. So now I have a lot of Android apps open on the bottom and I want to get rid of them. So you slide from the right hand side to the left hand side. Pick the square. There we go. No recent items. Okay. Well, I lied. So now pick the Fimi item right here. So the Fimi app is starting up. I'm going to hit enter device. Allow Fimi Navi 2 to access CRC. By all means, please do. There we are, we should see a nice bright screen because we see what our camera sees and I can move that gimbal up even though it's totally out of focus. There we are, it's focusing on the trees far beyond. Okay, so our drone's back there. Let's go start it up and uh, get it flying. You know, see if I can stay in the camera with the drone down here. Joysticks down and in. Prop should start and let's take it on up. And we're gonna put on the record, the camera record on there. You have two options to do it. You could touch the record button here or you could press the record button that's out here. Take that forward, spin it around so it looks at me. So on the left hand side, you have the scroll wheel to bring the camera gimbal down and look at me. So I'm using that scroll wheel. And there we go. I should be in the display. There we are. So now on the right hand side, if you're wondering what that scroll wheel is, that's for your exposure value down here where I'm pointing with my finger. Let me see, if I turn that, I can make the screen go over overly bright or I can make it get darker like that's just for adjusting your brightness so right now it actually on my screen it looks better to be underexposed than overexposed so I've got it at minus three right now but I'll put it back to zero okay next thing to show you is these buttons all over the place C1 and C2 I can't do anything with and I'll show you why if I click on the settings I'm gonna go down to the controller which is over here and you can see these are all the buttons you can play with. So it says custom button C3, which I believe is over here. Uh, it says you can't touch it, it's undefined. So if I click on it, it just says, nope, it doesn't work with this app. You have to have a different app. Other ones, C4, you can customize C5, C6. These two auxiliary one and two, those dials, they do nothing. Also this button over here, that does nothing as well. It changes color uh, based on the reception of your drone. So when you power everything on, it's red. And then when the drone is connected, it turns white. All right, so let's start with the big orange button here. Uh, you can go in scene mode, click it in scene mode. Scene mode is for flying uh, slow. It does uh, big wide movements. And if you put the brakes on, it doesn't stop very fast. It's just to be a smooth, smooth, smooth flight. And then we have normal mode, which we all know. Oop, normal mode right there. And if I go backwards here, I'm going to take sport mode and come right at me. Make sure there's no trees or anything to hit here. Okay, good. So I'll put it in sport mode and uh, there we go. It will just go really fast. There we go. Stop that because the sun is in my eyes. I've lost sight of the drone. Let's go back to normal mode. It's not good to film into the sun. That's what I'm doing here. So I'm going to spin this around. That's why my image probably looks all goofy. Hang on a sec. There we go. Now I'll be lit up by the sun by filming into the sun. So now that it's sunny out, uh, I'm gonna move this around. Can you see it looking through my GoPro with the glare? Like it's, this is very bright sun directly on this. So let me see, sun's coming this way. What if I turn, if I go like this, I'll put my body, blocks it. So you probably see it now if I move it around. 
And now, keep looking at it, now we're back into the glaring sun. This GoPro probably doesn't pick it up that well, the image with the brightness of the sun, but for my eyeballs, it's very bright and very easy to see. It almost looks too bright. So this switch over here does nothing. I could flick it all day long, it does nothing. On the side, you have a return to home button here and a pause button, that's if you wanna pause any of the features, if it's doing anything autonomously. The C1 button is a back button. So if I hit C1, I'm going out of the Femi app. So watch this, I'm out of it. There we go, I'm out. So I have to go back in. And let's go back in, there we are. And over here, the C2 button, that's your zoom button. What you do is you press that and you turn the dial. So you see me, I'm gonna zoom in to me here, press it and then zoom. That's your zoomy thing. So you can go up to like a three times zoom in 4K. So I can go in farther, 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 almost, almost at three and there we go, three times zoom. And you can come out of zoom just by scrolling it back out. There we are. There we go, back to one time zoom. And then over on the side, way down here, you have another switch, but it's a momentary switch. In other words, it's not a latch. When you push it, it doesn't stay over. I think that's for the microphone over here to make the sounds come out. There's a microphone and a speaker. So let me try it here. So let me go like this. Does it go into microphone mode? Yeah, it does. Hello, hello, hello. You can see it working and it's coming out. I can hear it coming out of the drone. So you probably can't hear it right now, but out of the drone, as I'm talking, my voice is coming out of the drone. That's pretty cool. And then on the back of the controller, you have two buttons and you can assign those. So the left one, I think I put it at the battery. Let me try to press it. So yeah, my battery status for flight time. And then my right one, I think was to make the camera look down. Was that it? Yeah, so look down and look forward. There we go, so that's the right one. So that's pretty much, I believe, all the button assignments you have. Everything else is the same as we're used to on any other controller. Although you do have HDMI out and a pile of other things up here, which makes this pretty awesome. So I believe that's all the assignments I can show you right now because there's nothing else I can see button-wise on here to show you of anything. I just wanted to see how well it works out in the sun. For my eyes, it works really well. Here, I'm gonna walk in the shade over here. There we go. Can you see that screen even better? Here I am in the shade. With the, with the branches on top of me. So that's what it looks like there. It looks pretty good, doesn't it? And uh, coming back out, going in the sun, now how does it look? There we are. So for my eyes, everything looks really, really good on the display. It's very bright. I can see it very well. I don't know how well the GoPro picked it up. All right, I'll take that over there. We'll try the last button, which is the return to home. So there's a return to home button on here. Just press it. I'm pressing it, it's beeping and it should go around and into return to home mode. If I want to stop the return to home, there is a pause button down here. You could pause it and it will stop and then I could do something else. Hey, it looks nice up in the sky. The image is really good. So while it's coming back, uh, a few other things to tell you about the display. It is 1080p transmission. So the image I see on the display is 1080p, which means the resolution is really good for your eyeballs to make out small items. Just make sure it's not landing on me. So I'm going to show you where this pause comes in because it's not landing on the landing pad. It's a little bit off to the left. Uh, let me just see where it comes down. Yeah, it's going to the left. So on my little controller here, I'm going to hit the pause button. Right, I'll just break it down a little bit. Let it go down a little bit more. And then I'm going to hit the pause button now. There we go. So it stops. I've got full control. Go over to the right and I'll pop it down on the landing pad myself. Right over here. I can do a better job than the automatic landing. All right, so there we go, that's down. And looking at my display, I have a B right in front of the lens. Now he's gone. All right, I hope this tiny little mini review I did of the TX10 helped you out in deciding if this is the remote for you. Do you need a remote with a display in it? The benefit of having a display is you don't have to use your phone. It is a 5.5 inch display, which is very similar to everything DJI has, and as well as most cell phones on the market, unless you get some big model cell phone. I will tell you as well, if you have a very expensive cell phone, that has a display of over 1000 nits, it will be brighter than this. However, cell phones are only designed to give you a thousand nits or more for a very short period of time because you drain the battery on them. So I know for a fact with my iPhone, I get five minutes of high brightness screen and then it reduces to blackness almost because it drains the battery. Whereas this will give you four hours of high brightness screen. So that's a benefit there. Other benefit is all the cool switches on here that you can customize. Another benefit of this is you can put other apps on for the Fimi. I've never done it, but apparently you can. And those other apps 
will give you more features for the Fimi doing different things as well as probably make use of some of the other dials and switches that the Fimi app doesn't make use of. So that's a bonus there as well. And finally, in case you're wondering, will this controller work with another drone on the market? As far as I know, no, not at this time because the specifications did not say it works with anything else. It's made by Fimi for Fimi, as far as I know. Will it work with the original Fimi X8 SE? The answer is no. According to the specs, it only works with the 2022 edition. So if you have a 2020 edition or earlier, apparently it doesn't work. That's what the specs say. I haven't tried it. If you're also wondering, will it work with the Fimi Mini? The answer is no. According to the specs, it says it will not work with the Fimi Mini, at least at this time of this recording. I don't know, maybe in the future, Fimi will do like DJI and make it work with everything. But right now, as I'm recording this, it's no, no, no to everything else. If you have any other questions on this controller, then uh, post your comments below and I will answer them and you'll have your answer. But for now, I say thanks for watching this video. There will be links below to where you can find this. It's, it's all over the internet on different stores. I know it's on Banggood, Fimi, of course. Uh, if I find it any place else, I'll put the links to that as well. So for now, I say thanks for watching this video. Once again, links are below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and I'll catch you in future videos with many more product reviews. Bye.